Today on Exploring Limitations, I'm going to show you three ways to add depth to your simple drum machine sound using only reverb. Here we go! Drum machines, especially old ones like this Roland TR-505, need some love when you put them in a mix. If you're new to the channel and you're curious about learning more about this machine specifically, you're in luck. I already made a video about that and several others with TR-505 content. Anyway, one of the best ways to add some love is through reverb. Reverb. But there are multiple ways of using just one stereo reverb pedal and the mixer and the Tascam Porter 2. In fact, there's three ways. So let's get straight into it. Method number one. I've recorded a dry drum beat here onto track one with a little bit of tom action. So let's have a listen to that. I for one may be crazy, but I do think the drum machine and a Porta Studio go together like peanut butter and jelly. But with that being said, that's a pretty uh, dry drum beat, which I must admit I am almost always more in favor of dry drum beats. But there's still ways to add ambience, which is why we're here today. The first and simplest way to use reverb on one of these machines is a mono reverb as an insert. So for that, you need an insert cable. If you're not familiar with an insert cable, it is not a simple breakout Y. You can't just get a breakout cable. It's different. It's wired differently. It's actually wired in a loop. So the tip is the send. The ring is the return from a single insert point. I'm sure you're all familiar, but if you're not, a TRS cable means tip, ring, sleeve. And if you open one of these up, there's a connection on each one of those. And this is not wired like those breakout cables where it's just like a stereo to two monos. So in a standard insert point onto any mixer, including big mixers, that are you know famous and stuff. They have these all hidden away. When you're at a studio, you don't see them, but in the back somewhere, they've got this plugged into one hole on a channel, and then the send goes out to a outboard piece of gear, and then this comes from the outboard piece of gear as the return. And in today's case, since we're on exploring limitations and you're here with me looking at weird DIY home stuff, the Behringer Digital Reverb is my reverb. So what I'm going to do, if you can see this here, there's an insert point. I'm sure I will add uh, some B-roll about the insert point right here for my channel one. Simply add that. I heard a little pop in my ear, but I'll edit that out for you. And this side is the send, it's labeled. The send goes to the input of your outboard piece of gear and then your return goes into the output. So now we have that same drum beat, but it's going through this reverb pedal in a mono fashion. This reverb has a wet and dry knob. You can see that hopefully here on camera two. So let me just show you what that sounds like while the drum beat is playing. I think it's good to get, try to go from zero to just a slight little bit, just to hear what that sounds like. Now, those of you who are familiar with DAWs and grew up with DAWs, fun fact, when you stick a plug in onto a channel and it's called an insert, this is literally what you're doing. And so that's why even having a piece of gear that has a blend, that's ultra important because obviously you heard when I cranked the reverb all the way, the drums are not, you know, not so great, are they? Uh, they're, you know, that's not a typical 
use of the drum sound and then you'd be committed to it unless you were thinking around with these knobs while you were mixing down it's a way to put reverb on drums it's not my preferred way but it's way number one and next we're going to move on to method number two the second method is to use the stereo reverb as an effect send and a return the first initial difference between the last technique and this one is that you will take the mix knob on your reverb and turn it all the way to 100. Now remember, 9 out of 10 doctors recommend a completely wet reverb as an effect send. This will become uh, apparent as to why very soon. When you're using this method, first of all, now I have a stereo image, which is always fun to play with, especially in the limitations of a four track, to be able to easily get some sense of space is very, very useful because your number of tracks to actually pan is obviously only four maximum. Using the effect send and return is a good way to get some spreading. If I didn't say it before, the way this is wired for the effects send on this Tascam and most mixers is your channel one, where the recording is, has this effects control knob. Right now it's completely off. That sends out one cable here on the side. This effects out. That goes in the input of your reverb, and then the outputs of my reverb, since it's a stereo reverb, are returning back to the effects returns in the left and the right channels. Now this becomes your control instead of this in terms of how much reverb you're using, which is one of the reasons why you want 100% wet reverb, kids. If you're watching, this applies to your DAW users too. Your reverb should always be set to 100% wet if you're using it as an effect scent. I gotta make that clear. But anyway, let's play around with this for a second. Now what's great about this method as opposed to the first one is that you're still getting that full dry signal in there. It's essentially parallel processing. And, and I think it is the best way to use reverb on a Tascam mixer. It's, it's the go-to. I'm not gonna say it's the best way because it still has one limitation uh, that you could fix with an external device, what I'm about to say. There's no way for me to EQ this reverb. Now, you might be saying to yourself, okay, I have an EQ pedal, I can stick it in the chain. Well, if you don't have that, this is what brings us to method number three. The third and final method that I'm gonna show you today is similar to the previous one, but instead of coming back into the effects return, I've taken those same outputs, instead of going into the returns, now I'm going into channels five and six. I'm very lucky on this Tascam Porta Studio uh, to have these extra channels. I remember when I first got this machine, I was like, I thought it was a four track, why are there six? Well, these don't record to tracks and the tape. These are used for tricks like this. I could do a whole video series on what to do with these channels, but today I'm showing you the trick of sending your reverb into here. Now, you might be asking, Hey, Made on Tape Man, uh, what's gonna be the difference between using the effects send and going into there? Well, I just said it in the last segment, it's EQ. And now I can EQ the reverb itself. Uh, I'm gonna play the drum beat again, start dry, and then I'm gonna bring in this reverb and then I'm going to play with this EQ so you can hear what's going on and I will talk about it. All right, here we go, check it out. Flat EQ right now. Now let me cut the loads and show you what's going on. I'll even cut the highs a little bit. Cut them all the way. Could 
you hear the difference when I cut the lows? Now, I'm assuming many of you watching probably already know this because I know a lot of you out there create music yourselves. But in case you're new to using reverb in a mix, this is a fundamental element. It doesn't matter if you're using a Tascam, Porta Studio, or a DAW. 99 times out of 100, you always gotta leave room for 1% for creativity. The, the way you treat reverb in a mix is to cut those lows out of it, especially with the drums. So let me, let me play that back again, and you can hear how the low end of the reverb is really messing with the drum sound. And listen to how clear and cleaned up it sounds when I remove the low end. Now you even saw me take all the highs out as well. Uh, on this machine, the highs are set at 10,000 hertz, the lows are at 100 hertz. And when you take both of them out, you're kind of left with this middle cone of reverb. Now that sounds really clear to me. Let's hear that. Now, ba now back to normal. I genuinely like that, um, and I think it's a great way to liven up your drum machine sound. As you notice, I didn't mess very much with the reverb settings here. It, you know, wasn't my favorite reverb settings. It's not my favorite reverb sound, but that's not what it's all about. Today, I'm just, like every episode, exploring the limitations. Now, I feel like context is always helpful. So there you have it. Pretty simple, right? It's a quick video today. I just wanted to dive into the aspects of how to use a mixer uh, on your Porta Studio and the various ways that you can get reverb on those pesky, pesky drum machines. They're not pesky. Again, I think drum machines and Porta Studios go together like peanut butter and chocolate, peanut butter and jelly. They were meant for each other. They're from the same time period. As always, uh, these videos are meant to inspire and I hope they give you ideas. There's a gazillion ways till Sunday that you can mess around with routing, mess around with other effects. One of the fun things I like about sending effects to these channels is that you can actually do that from the tape outs as well. That's a good old trick and that leaves your effects send in return totally free for other effects and other tracks. You know, maybe down the road, if you guys are interested, I'll show you a more, the most complex mix that you could do on a Tascam Porta Studio where I'm routing everything. Uh, everything's plugged in. So I uh, definitely will consider doing that in the future. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you're interested in supporting me, you know, all the links are below in the description, Patreon, Bandcamp, all that stuff. I, I truly appreciate you just being here and watching. I truly appreciate you being here listening. We have a wonderful budding community growing here and I'm just very ecstatic that everyone is, is cool and awesome and you guys are sweet. I really appreciate it. But with that, as always, peace and be good to each other.
Can you see my cat? There he is. He's been sick. Send some love and good vibes to our sick cat. <laughs>